who is Conor Gallagher? Who is this central midfielder AM that has been playing more for Chelsea and is starting to make a name for himself? Stay tuned as I discuss him in great detail. Alright, so the first order of business is simply his profile. Now, Conor Gallagher's performances at Crystal Palace further cemented his status as one of the most promising players in the newest wave of hot prospect players in English football. His best football to date was played at Palace under the direction of Patrick Vieira, one of the Premier League's greatest midfielders after he had previously made an impression on loan away from Chelsea at Charlington, Swansea City and West Brom. Another international midfielder who managed him at Charlington, Lee Bauer, stated of the then 19-year-old Gallagher in October 2019, whenever you tell him to do something, he complies with it. And I just keep urging him to enter the box where things are starting to go well for him. His work ethic and willingness are remarkable. He needs to learn more though and he's still a work in progress but he's been a terrific addition. So at the time he had said that and I guess it correlates with what's happening right now and he still needs to learn a, a bit more. I think he's 21, 22, cl getting close to 22. So obviously you know he still has a lot to learn. He's still pretty young and you know time is on his side in terms of you know should he not get an injury and so forth. But that is simply the profile. Okay, so this is necessarily where the video gets a bit longer in terms of, you know, the tactical analysis of Gallagher. Now, Gallagher, who is essentially, or is mostly a right-footed player, can fulfill and fill a variety of central midfield positions. He displays excellent composure when he has the ball at his feet in the final third and makes intelligent decisions regarding how long to hold onto it and which team to pass the ball to. He frequently maneuvers opponents towards the ball to provide room for others to enter and he is especially successful doing this as a number 10 because it gives other offensive players more time to change places. If a potential shooting opportunity arises, he regulates the speed of his pass to release it at an appropriate tempo and invite his teammate to shoot. His passing is detailed so he delivers each pass that he makes with the ball to promote particular movements from the target of his pass. He will play at a different tempo if he needs to cross the ball, turn or set it back. One that is impacted by his awareness of the other team's defenders and the locations of potential openings. Despite fearing his right foot, Gallagher plays the ball and deflects pressure using various areas of his foot. His right foot is used for most of his shots which are typically powerful ones like we saw against Crystal Palace where he scored that winning goal in the 90th minute from the periphery of the penalty area or once taken while moving after making a supporting run through central territories to get close to a striker like I said like the goal he scored against Crystal Palace he can still give a wide, wider range of passes if he can learn to use his left foot more frequently like we've seen in the case of our Kevin De Bruyne who developed significantly at Manchester City you know having one preferred foot it's okay but when you when you're able to adapt to whatever situation because sometimes realistically you're not going to get the ball on your preferred foot all the time so when you're able to adjust to the fact that you know you may not get the ball on that foot that you prefer it to be on it becomes easier and we saw that with Kevin De Bruyne that you know no matter what foot he uses he still can be effective at Manchester City and he and his that crazy prowess that he brings to the team you know, is so important to the way that they play under Pep Guardiola. Now, despite favoring his right foot, you know, like I said, in a deeper position, he's more likely to dribble the ball and he will do so to avoid pressure rather than to advance possession. His agility allows him to turn in both directions, but his, his inclination to play off of his right foot sometimes causes him to turn backwards rather than using his left, like I was stating previously. When you when you when you have a preferred foot that you are so reliant on, it becomes difficult because you're going to want that ball on, for example, your right foot all the time because you know that that's the foot that's effective because that that is your preferred foot. But when you're able to adjust to it, it becomes easier. And in the case of a Gallagher, because he's so young and because he's still accustomed to using his preferred foot, which is the right foot, it is not as easy for him to dribble forward when the ball is on his left foot. So instead, he goes backwards 
tries to get the ball onto his right foot where it's closer to his to his, his counterparts in terms of his teammates so that he can quickly make a pass should a press a press coming from his opponents arise so it's, it's it's sensible but at the same time it may slow down the the tempo and it may go into the direction that you know it could be a counter attack but because he's not able to get the ball onto his left onto his right foot because he's on his left foot he may go back which affects the team per se now his agility allows him to to do this like i said this is evident in the way he drops his shoulder and bursts in that direction even though he lacks some of his contemporary speed over longer distance he can move similarly well from a standing start before making an amazing change in direction to escape opponents his first explosive movements frequently result in him losing markers which improves his control which you know is always a positive because you know it means that he has more time to make the next decision and think about okay should i make this pass for example to Travis james should i make this pass to a chill world or a cook career should i make this pass to a a deep lying playmaker or a deep lying forward if you want to call him that kai havertz or should i make the pass to raheem sterling who may be running off the the side or the shoulder of a defender or a, or a fullback so it's it's always intuitive and instinctive when he does this obviously this is always going to be a positive you know for gallagher gallagher is equally adept at securing position as he is at changing the game or cutting through defenses with passes or dribbles because of his consistency in making decisions from a deeper midfield position where there is less need for him to dribble he can link play from the fence to attack and help build position in deeper territory now obviously this reminds me a bit of you know what the role that people believe Mason Mo has which is you know connecting the midfield and the attack however when he's playing that deeper role you know Gallagher it, it means that he has to connect the defense to the attack because he, it means that he has to collect the ball from the defense try to push the ball into for example like I stated a Sterling an Aubameyang for example a Broha a Havertz or if he's playing with a Mr. Mo obviously it, it leads to him doing that and Christian Pulisic you know you can never leave these players out despite them not playing as much games as they may want to now obviously because of this it becomes easier here he frequently oppose here here he frequently displays a simpler style of play that involves shorter passes to control the ball get past opposing defensive blocks and play into those in wide positions gallagher presses aggressively when necessary and he's also eager to duel and contend for the ball with any opponent's profile because of his mobility he can change directions while pushing and while accelerating to reach an opponent but unfortunately he needs to improve at decelerating in order to slow down when it's necessary especially while moving toward opponents that are nibble regardless his worth ethic is commendable and includes tracking back across the field to cover teammates before engaging in combat or attempting tackles which means that you know if he has to make a tackle it's because it needs to be done and he has no other choice which in a sense you can go back to the game for example against Sister City where he got a red card or a second yellow card due to the fact that you know everybody was caught out of position or he believed that that was no other option there so he made that tackle you know that subsequently led to him getting that second yellow card and you know obviously being sent off eventually now i want to quickly you know get into the role that he had at crystal palace Conor gallagher's role at crystal palace was primarily playing as that number 10 in a 4-2-3-1 or as an aggressive central midfielder in a 4-3-3 during his spell you know unknown at Silas Park you know he was known for linking up quite well with Wilfred Zaha who would make those moves infield and overlap with Tarek Mitchell from the left as you know Mitchell and Gallagher support him as he tries to feed either Christian Benteke or Hudson Edward Palace normally makes few crosses and instead relies largely on combinations through central area. Gallagher entered the right inside channel during attacks directed to the right to help Jordan Ayu from inside who typically stays wider for a longer period of time than Zaha would. Even so, their right back or one of their defensive midfielders may occasionally make overlapping runs which causes Gallagher to drift to the right 
and contribute from that broader area while others choose to attack through the inside channel, possibly while he crosses the ball. Gallagher's presence between the lines and around Zaha made it so that Crystal Palace frequently received the most crucial passes. Gallagher assumes more forward positions to attack as a second striker and moving behind or across the opposition's defence when Zaha moves into withdrawn areas, receive the ball and then try to dribble forward. The senior strikers Benteke and Edward typically occupy both of their opposing central defenders which improves Gallagher's ability to find openings in the centre. Benteke frequently received straight passes thus G Gallagher typically played beside Zaha to target the second phase of possession and provide support for Zaha as he moves in field. When he does, he has good timing to master ball's trajectory and the inclination to brace himself for a goal shot. Gallagher may be seen moving into a deeper position when Palace is set up in a 4-3-3 to help form an aggressive and a double pivot and to help build possession into midfield. Especially if Police is up against an aggressive and persistent press. He nearly always attacks through the right inside channel and supports from inside of the right side the attacker, which is also different from their 4 2 3 1. Zaha is less likely to retreat to receive the ball because similar rotation to those that characterize their 4 2 3 1 unfold towards the left. Instead, he moves closer to Palace's striker, giving Gallagher more freedom. To run through the inside channels and beyond or across the field and between the lines. Gallagher is allowed more leeway to adopt varied positions when the ball enters the final third, which encourages him to receive the ball and try to directly assault the goal or to apply defensive pressure before releasing a teammate. So essentially this is the player profile, the tactical analysis and a little breakdown of his role at Crystal Palace at the time. Hope you enjoyed the video, road to 400 subscribers, like and subscribe, share the video, help me to get to 400 subscribers and this is essentially the second video of this series that I'm planning to do of player profiles. Hope you enjoyed this video yet again, keep the blue flag flying high, cheers, keep safe and see you in the next video.